Hi everyone, it's Dion Mason here. As you gathered from the title of this video, this is not going to be one of my usual videos. I usually try to make videos that are around the health and wellness subject that are motivational, educational, or perhaps inspirational. And any of the postings I make, I usually try to follow that guideline. But earlier this year, I got news of a posting that was made about me that uh, was quite disparaging. And I struggled to determine what I was going to do about it. Since social media has come into play, um, it has brought a lot of great things and also a lot of not so great things as we know. We know that cyberbullying and people being able to put their opinion on a page without being identified is prevalent. And I'm certainly not immune to that. I mean, I've had many people make comments and, and things of that nature, which I've just generally ignored. Um, but in this case, I found out that somebody, as you can probably tell from the title, which I'll say her name, Julie Black, made a posting um, on social media about me that was quite disparaging. At the time when I heard about it, honestly, I had a number of emotions that came to play. Um, Julie Black is someone that I've admired for many, many years. I would consider myself, for lack of a better word, a fan. I'm not a great uh, I don't love the word fan because the word fanatic, fan means fanatic. I'm not a fanatic. I don't know where she lives and all that, but I do admire her as an artist. Um, I've purchased her music. I've been to her concerts. Um, she was someone that I looked up to as a Canadian icon and someone that I really enjoyed her music. So I was quite shocked. Uh, my first emotion, I was shocked when I found out that she posted um, a voice note in a WhatsApp group about me that was that was negative um and then i was i was angry you know because i thought here's someone that i've supported for many years i didn't understand why she would do that like why would she um say such terrible things about me to someone who had been supportive of her and who um had participated in many, many of her projects and then i thought what do i do about this do i ignore it do I take some sort of action? So I weighed various different actions. Now, many of you may be saying, well, wait a second, this posting that she made, which you'll, certain, you'll, you'll, you'll hear very shortly, she did this on March 13th, 2019. I'm making this video some eight months later. You might be saying, as I would be saying, why, why did you take so long to respond? Well, honestly, I was going through a number of personal and professional things that were happening that I just didn't have the capacity to really respond. Um, I had been scheduled for surgery within two weeks in which my doctor had indicated that I could not work for a month. So I literally, when I found out, was in the midst of wrapping up different projects and getting my classes covered, my group fitness classes covered um, while I'd be away, making sure my, my clients were, were taking care of while I'd be away. So I was preparing for surgery for one. Um, I also was in the midst of some summer projects. I was trying to get as much done before my surgery. I had just a lot going on um, in the middle of March. Um, I also was preparing for like, the Canfit Pro World Fitness Convention that was coming up in the summer. I had to be thinking about that, getting prepared for my sessions. I had, as well as a founder and the, um, and the race director of the Toronto Carnival Run, there was a number of things that I needed to submit in person. There was just a lot that was going on um, the week that she posted um, her comments about me. And I didn't want to just respond in a knee-jerk way that would come off as angry, like the angry black woman, or or would not be um, professional, or in any way that would, would create more damage to my image. I didn't want to respond in a way that wasn't thought out. So I just basically quit the side and thought, you know what? I'm not going to deal with this right now. I have all these other things to deal with and I'll think about this a little bit later when I'm a little bit more um, calm and able to really think it through and um, decide what I'm going to do. So when I started thinking about it, I thought, well, when I really listened carefully to what she said, as she made comments that were libelous, um, that were attacking not only me personally, which you'll, serve, you'll, begin, you'll hear shortly, but also professionally, which affects my livelihood. So this is very serious. And Julia Black is not just somebody who I call um, keyboard gangsters, you know, these trolls that sit in their mother's basement and, and just tap keys behind a keyboard who may have a couple followers. No, Julia Black, as I mentioned, is a Canadian icon. 
She is an R&B singer, a songwriter, an actor, a multi-award winner. She has an international platform. And the, the posting that she made was in a WhatsApp group that um, contained hundreds of, of individuals that had access to that voice note across two continents and multiple countries. So I recognize that this was serious. This was not just, um, as I mentioned, a keyboard gangster in their mother's basement making you know, a comment against me. This was someone that has a large platform, a large network that used her platform to attack me. So I recognize that I need to respond to this because this is my reputation, this is my image, and this is my livelihood that she attacked. Um, so I thought, do I respond in kind in a video or a voice note, or do I seek legal counsel, which I did. And um, I, I certainly had a case that I could pursue in court against her for her libelous commentary that would impact my livelihood, possibly impact my livelihood. But then I thought about the time it would take for me to litigate this, the tens of thousands of dollars I'd have to spend in legal fees. And in the end, I don't know if I'm going to get a proper outcome. And I remember something when I was growing up, my mother used to say to us as kids, you know, she would say that if you misbehaved in private, then you'd be disciplined in private. And if you misbehave in public, like if we embarrassed her on the street and, you know, acted out, then we would get disciplined in public and we'd get shamed. So I thought of this principle that my mother taught us when we were growing up and thought, you know, I think this applies. I, rather than go through the court system, I thought, you know what? She attacked me on social media, which is a public forum. Therefore, I'm going to respond not to attack her in kind, because I've gotten to a point in my own self-evolution that I'm really not interested in rolling in the mud with anybody who chooses to um, chooses that you know to spend their time just being negative towards other people. So I'm not interested in going tit for tat for her in any way. I'm certainly not interested in being a crab in the bucket and trying to drag her down in any way. No, I, I've gotten to a point in my career where I'm just trying to move upward and onward and not really in any way trying to be negative against anybody. But at the same time, because of her platform, because of her network, because of what she did, I'm not going to allow someone to just walk over me like a doormat and say things about me that are not true without a response. So I want to make it very, very clear that this video is about defending my name, my reputation, and my livelihood. This is not about attacking Julie Black. So I want to make that clear before we listen to the clip and I give my rebuttal. I also want to make it clear that I don't have a relationship with Julie Black. So this is not about two friends that have gone away. I don't know her personally. As I mentioned, I'm just somebody that liked her music. I was a fan and no longer a fan, but I was someone that used to enjoy her music. I purchased all of her albums. I have the receipts. Um, I've been to a number of her concerts. Um, I was such so much of a fan that I was even at her listening party for her debut album, This Is Me. Um, again, I've been to a number of her concerts. I had signed up for her Empowered In My Skin Women's Conference in 2018. Um, we've met a handful of times, but again, we're not, um, we're not friends, we're not business associates. I was just somebody that had admired her as an artist. Um, the lead up to this posting that she made was, I had, um, on the last time I had a chance to connect with her, we connected at the 2018 Canfit Pro Women Who Influence, in which I was invited to be a speaker. And she was also invited there to close out the event with a performance. So all of the speakers had a chance to connect with each other and we also had a chance to meet her. So um, I had a chance a moment to meet with her and speak with her, let her know that I had really appreciate her music. And in that short conversation, uh, she gave me her business card and indicated that she was starting a program called 100 Strong and Sexy, which was a fitness program, and she'd love for me to be a part of it. So I kind of went fangirl and I was like, yes, of course, I'd love to be a part of it. And that's when I joined the program in December 1st, 2018. And it ended 100 days later on about March the 7th or the 8th of 2019. I am a fitness and lifestyle coach, as many of you know. So um, after that, I continued my work as a fitness coach and I began my own online program, which is called DMF 60, which is a 60-day online coaching program. 
um, you're going to find out that this launch um, sparked her attack against me. But I want to make it clear that this is something that I do and have been doing for 20 years. I've been doing health and fitness and helping people to live healthier and better, stronger lives. Um, my online program, I began um, the initial construction of it a year prior. And I had been working with clients uh, to test out um, the program and to get their feedback so I could tweak it. When this opportunity came up, I put that aside, did her challenge, and then continued with what I had initially wanted to do in the first place, which was provide an online coaching platform, as is something that's um, getting quite popular. So I just want to make that clear as well, that this is something that I had been already working on, and I then launched it after um, I completed her program. Okay, so let's take a listen to what she said, and I'm going to give my rebuttal to that. I just have a quick announcement. So this is how you know we're on to something, ladies. Because the enemy is on the brow. So there's a now former SAS member, keeping it real, Dion Mason. I just gave her a call, but she didn't pick up. Who's basically trying to jack SAS. 60 day program, meal plans, group outings, etc. And she gave me a shout out. Um, but you see that in the the one time in the recent past that I didn't listen to my discernment, to that bent feeling. Hmm. What is this woman's intention for being here? Okay, so there's a lot to unpack in what she just said here. So she, she said the enemy is on the prowl. And she was not coy or um, ambiguous in any way about who she was talking about. She then named me Dion Mason, a former SAS or Strong and Sexy member, um, as this enemy. Now, besides being hurtful, it's like, where, Julie, if you're watching, what evidence, what action um, would cause me to be an enemy? As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I was a fan. I have all of Julie Black's albums, so I have financially invested in her career. I've been to a number of her concerts, again, bought tickets, financially invested in her career. I had been signed up for the Empowered in My Skin conference all three days. Like some people just went one day. I paid for a three-day conference that was hosted by Julie Black. I paid the fee to be part of the 100 and Strong and Sexy. And I followed uh, according to what their requirements were. I was often very supportive in the group of even supporting other women. And when I went on to announce my program, my announcement was made through my personal and professional network. It was not made through her network. I would not do that. I simply concluded the challenge and went on to do the work that I do. So this claim of the enemy is on the prowl is completely false. I have not done anything um, to impede her business or the program or anybody that was on the program. So this statement is completely false and, and does not speak to me as a character. I don't position myself as being enemies of people. Um, you know, people have different personality things, but I would not ever or have, as far as I'm concerned, um, done anything to that's illegal, unethical, or in any manner against her or the program that she was a minister. Um, she goes on as well to talk about the fact that um, I was trying to jack, she said they're trying to jack us, or I was trying to jack her was a term that she used. Now we know the word jack often refers to um, stealing. That's a very serious allegation that she made that I'm stealing from her. Again, Julie, if you're watching, stealing what? You know, I I don't know where she lives. I, I've, again, had a handful of encounters with her. I have, if she, are she trying to imply that I've stolen something physically from her? What is the evidence? What is she claiming that I've jacked or stolen? Now, if she's referring to um, her program, the 100 and Sex Strong and Sexy program, okay, this is a program that she created that is an online program for women. Julie Black did not invent online training programs. These, they've been going on for decades before her. Um, she didn't invent the concept of bringing women together. Uh, she didn't, and, you know, 
in my program, when you compare the two programs, her program is a 100-day program that tells women that they must exercise every single day for 45 minutes. That is the basis of the program. My program is a 60-day program. Okay, so right off the bat, there's differences right there. For one, Julie Black is not, as far as I'm concerned, and you feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but she does not hold any accreditations in health and wellness. She does not have a degree in kinesiology, a diploma in human kinetics, or any certifications in health and wellness. And her program reflected that. Whereas with my program, I am accredited health and fitness professional. So my program includes rest days because research shows that when you exercise continually day after day without rest, you cause a lot of problems on your body. Whereas the 160, uh, the 100 day program that she is promoting says no rest. Where, what research is she getting that from? Because all the research that I've read, that, that is not something that they would promote, that you never ever rest, not even professional athletes who exercise for that long th length of time without taking a rest day. So again, I'm not here trying to criticize her or her program. That's what she decided to do and then she has the right to do it and people have a right to investigate and decide if that's something that they want to join. But to claim that I somehow jacked or stole um, from her is completely false. My program provided guidance. It provided workout videos I provide in my group. I would give ladies the guidance that they needed to help them to actually be strong, to actually improve their cardiovascular strength and endurance and all these things. So again, where is the evidence that Julie Black claims that I'm trying to jack? Jack what? Steal what? She didn't invent transformation challenges. She did not invent the concept of bringing women together. You know, um, she did not, this is not something that she has the copyright or ownership of. So again, this is another false statement that she has made against me. I have not stolen anything. I am not a thief. I am an upright, honest person with integrity and I would never do such things. Let's continue on. And you guys know me, I keep it real. And these things I say to you, I can say to her and I called to say to her, but I didn't get her on the phone. Julie Black made this posting March 13th, 2019. I'm making this recording on uh, November the 25th, 2019. I have not received, um, a, I have not heard from Julie Black. Uh, that The night in question that she's talking to, I went back and looked at my phone records. I did notice a missed call from Julie Black Entertainment, but she did not leave a voicemail. At the time, uh, when I noticed the missed call, actually I was in session. I was teaching classes at the time when she called. I don't keep my phone with me when I'm with my clients. It's in my locker. So when I finished my, uh, my session, it was a Monday night at uh, 9 p.m. was when I finished. I looked at my phone, I saw a missed call. But it was 9 p.m. I had a scheduled conference call. As I mentioned on the outside, that week was a crazy week. I was wrapping up things. I was trying to get things done before my surgery. So I had a scheduled conference call at 9.15, plus I had to drive to North York to drop off some materials for a project that I was working on. But she did not leave me a message. All I saw was a missed call. And to date, she has not tried to reach out to me. She never sent me an email or any kind of correspondence to indicate any kind of grievance with me. Had she uh, called me, had she left me a message, had she left me an email, I would have responded and just kept it to that. I mean, she could have said whatever she wanted to say to me, to my face or on the phone, and I would have certainly responded, and I would have left it at that. But she instead rather, um, after not getting me, just immediately knee-jerk reaction, decided to make this posting to discredit and make false statements about me. So, hey, it's a free world. We have free will we get to do what we want we have choice there's where what we're what we're going to do and continue to do at SAS is to build bridges not walls to create synergy and not division not disharmony right so some of you may may choose to try out her program no problem what I am saying though is check the people's intentions that you associate with because intention says a lot about character. Love you guys. 
So I find her closing statement, um, quite frankly, to be quite hypocritical and disingenuous. Um, Julie Black has a tattoo on her arm that says, uh, that's of a bridge, we build bridges, not walls. And she, she stated that again, we build bridges, not walls. Now, if Julie Black actually understood the function of a bridge and what a bridge does, a bridge is a device that we know, or a mechanism that we know that connects people, that allows people to travel from one point um, on their journey to another point and so that they continue on their journey. Yet here I am, somebody that took her program and continued on in my life journey to also help other people to transform their lives. And she attacked me for that. So my question is, what is Julie Black's intention then? She said, she asked me what my intentions were. And I tell you, honestly, my intention when I joined the program, one, I was a fan girl, so I was a fan of hers when I joined the program. Two, for self-care, I recognize that as a fitness professional, I'm often um, providing programs and caring for other people and neglecting my own self-care. So that was another reason why I joined the program. And three, also for education. I oftentimes will do programs, do workshops, buy books, so that I can put myself through something so that before I ask my clients to do something, I can say, yes, I tried this diet, I tried that supplement, I, I did this, I did that, and I can give them my fee honest feedback. So part of it, yes, was education, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I had, you know, calling me an enemy or that, that I had some other, you know, ulterior motive is just not true. Um, if Julie Black understood how the health and fitness industry works and how we as health professionals gather our information to help our clients, rather than attacking me, she would have probably been flattered by the fact that I was part of a, her program to help me in my personal growth and professional growth. But instead, as I mentioned, I find her quite disingenuous and hypocritical to, to attack somebody um, after she considers herself to be a bridge. She claims that, again, she, she builds bridge, not walls. Well, how does publicly attacking someone that um, was part of your program not building a wall? Because I can guarantee, now that I've found that she attacked me, I will never buy one of her albums again. I will never join any of her programs. You know, I used to even talk about her to my clients and encourage people and say, hey, you should you know, support Canadian talent. I would play her music in my classes. Well, that's not going to happen anymore. So a wall has been built. How, you know, how is she building a bridge in this situation? Right? So again, I find, I find her comments at the end, you know, telling people, oh, if you want to try your program, you know, you know kind of condescending. And again, um, clearly, in my opinion, she's basically telling people, don't join the program. You know, yes, she acknowledges that's a, that's a, free, that's a free world, um, you know, but it, it, it has a bit of a... Um, how do you say, just condescending, just very disingenuous air to be like, well, yeah, if you want to join her program, it's a free world. And we all know it's a free world, it's a free market, you know. Um, but this whole thing to me, I just found very distasteful, just very disappointing. And again, because it came from someone that I used to admire, who I've supported financially, I've supported um, physically and attending many of her workshops and her events. And it's just sad that she has chosen uh, someone who was considered one of the 25 top singers in Canada, has chosen her platform to attack one of her biggest fans is very disappointing. In any case, um, I just wanna close out by saying that um, these statements that she made about me are false, untrue. And if you want to get to know me personally and professionally, if you wanna find out um, what the integrity of my programs, feel free to actually come to my programs, come to my classes, have a sit down with me, have a discussion with me, and you'll get to know me as a person, not based on these words from Julie Black, the entertainer, who has never sat down and had lunch with me, who's never had a, an in-depth conversation with me, who's never been to any of my classes, who didn't even look at my program, because my program hadn't started yet. So. She's attacking a program that she has not experienced and a person whom she has not experienced. So it is really sad that this is the, 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 what she is becoming or, or doing um, 
And it's unfortunate that she has gone to this type of level and stooped to this level. In any case, thank you very much for watching my video. And um, I, unfortunately, it's a subject that's a little bit controversial, but I hope that you understand my intention is that I'm really here to defend myself. Um, I don't believe in um, lowering my vibrations and attacking other people. But at the same time, if I'm attacked, particularly in this magnitude, I generally have a right to stand up and um, defend myself, which is what I'm doing. And hopefully you're able to understand and see my intention and see that this, all of this was completely unwarranted, disappointing, and, um, and hopefully you will not believe the things that she said about who I am. Have a wonderful, blessed day, and feel free to come back to my channel and learn about more positive things, motivational things, uh, fitness and health tips, and how you can live your best life through improving your health and wellness. Take care and have a blessed day.